right now it's sort of at an intuitive level, and, and I'm slowly developing uh, uh, techniques, you know, little trial and error things to learn. Well, you know, I found out the most interesting thing. Well, there's there, there's even more interesting things than the word discovery I found, which I'm going to after I say the, what, what sounds more impressive. But uh, I, was, I was on the internet, and I was, you know, I do a lot of genealogy research. And I was tracing uh, numerous people, uh, and uh, uh, I was looking up this Brundage name. And I stumbled upon some relatives of because I, I do DNA with it too, and, yeah. and I, I suppose they relate to this Brundage family. And I stumbled on uh, Obama's tree, oh, and, yeah? and it looked like I related. I didn't, I didn't really think much of it at first, but then, then I found some sort of a connection. Well, names that, that fit fairly well, and it looked like it was going to connect up, and then, then uh, overnight it just sort of fell apart. And I thought, well, I got to try and just make sure. And I found another name that I relate to. They connected really easily to Obama. Uh, it was through his, his mother, oh, okay. Dunham. Oh. And uh, it, it's like a path between about 50 people and oh, Obama's. Okay. Well, it's, I, it's one of those jokes you, you dread saying, but it's like 47 <laughs> people, 47 shades. Yeah. Well, I mean, we won't go there, but. <laughs> But anyway, it's for like 47 people to Obama. Well, but the, but the really neat thing that isn't act, well, it isn't necessarily a relationship like that in the family tree. It could be, but um, his grandparents or great grandparents, something like mine, lived in this little teeny whistle stop in Indiana. So yeah. they probably sat on each other's porches back yeah. in the 1800s. Yeah. yeah. All right, I think I'm ready to address the mic. This is my mic. I would like to welcome you all to Sacred Grounds, the longest running poetry open mic, the known and unknown universe. Um, the signing sheet is on the clipboard. I'm going to hand it to Sally Lynn Saunders. She will hand it to those people. If you want to line up or group up, I'm going to hand it to her. While I do the announcements, pen, sign up sheet, and then just, oh, sorry. Why is there nobody here yet? I don't know. But in seven o'clock, and we're gonna go for the. I don't think they went all to Chinatown. No. Well, it could be. It is. It is. They, I think. Are they doing the parade? Well, they're they're having the the year of the sheep. So. Yeah, but I think it might be that this 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 might be the night that they do the parade. There. Yeah. No, no, the parade's two weeks away. Oh, two weeks away. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think. I don't think everybody go to the parade. No, it's two weeks away. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's a couple weeks after the thing. Right? The Chinese people might be doing a lot of housekeeping for tomorrow, but the other people yeah. will come here besides China. All right, so while the uh, sign-in is being signed in upon, I'm going to take care of the normal announcements, or the abnormal announcements. So I did say welcome to the longest running open mic that we know of. Five poetry and good food, or good food and fine poetry, since 1972. And we have a Facebook in case you're interested, or really want to sign up for that. And I have a mailing list here that people sign in if they want to get information. Tonight's feature, Celine Spees, is not here yet, but she is really a very wonderful person. I'm going to do the keynote, the person who was supposed to do the keynote uh, hurt his foot, so I will be taking care of that. The mini feature is, it will, will not be here because he has a, an emergency, so our keynote and mini are both uh, not with us this evening. Uh, Mr. Natural will set up the streaming, and if you have cell phones, like I know I do, 
Now's the time to take them out and turn them off. I always remind people to do that because it happens, as they say in France. Squish happens. All right. I'm going to introduce the fabulous prizes. Oh, the white condom is on, but I should turn it just a bit that way. There we go. Um, okay. The fabulous prizes. American Tabloid by James Ellery. I have not read this. This was given to me, so I don't know anything about it. In case you're in financial distress, how to get out of debt, stay out of debt, and live prosperously. If you're a dieter, or even if you're not, there are 365 great recipes, 20-minute recipes. I tried two of them. One of them took 22. One of them took 18. So it averages out. Don DeLillo, The White white Noise. I only read part of it. I liked it, but I don't know the rough of it. So. And then a couple of these from John over here. These are fur tiles, I guess you'd call them. Yeah, but you can use them as trivets and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, or coasters. Or, or trivets or coasters. Very nicely done. Beautiful colors. Those are all here. You say, how the heck do you get these? Well, once you've signed in, there's a number next to the aim at the end of the evening. I shuffle a bunch of cards with numbers on them and then pick those numbers. Is there anything else that I need to do here? Light common, amp, mid volume, primus, prize. Oh, tonight's theme, there's a special. I brought this. Yes, the cameras. But it's cold one. There are only 48 stars on it. <laughs> so what I decided, what I thought about doing, and you don't have to do this this evening, you may if you want to. But I'm thinking about making it something of an event where you, when you come up to do your open mic, you can say, I'm addressing the flag. It was to say the poem you have written or want to read has something to do with this. You don't have to do that. I'm not going to do that this evening because I wasn't prepared even though it was my idea. But, so, the point is, uh, address the flag if you so desire it. I'm going to make, you know, sort of amp that up a little bit as time goes on. I hope you're good at Anyway. So that takes care of that. Oh, and give a round of applause to Teddy and Fiona back there. They are the hosts. And keep it warm and keep it good. So we put that there, that there. The clock goes. The glasses are on. Um, I'm going to make one videographer correction. I think this is just a little bit too much in front of the light. There we go. All right. All right. Thank you. So normally, uh, actually, Normally, every week we have a, a keynote speaker, and tonight the keynote speaker hurt his foot, so he cannot be here. However, I have something very interesting. I mean, the people here, I don't think, know this guy or remember him, because I didn't remember him. But his name is Bill Shibley, and years and years ago, he was the host for this event before Johanna. Janet came, like, I think the late 80s or something like that. She went for about 20 years. And he was in there somewhere beforehand, and someone who came here knew him, and when he passed away recently, they saw to it that I got this. So I thought for the <coughs> keynote, I would read a few things by him. It's a very sure. rare document there. Huh? Sort of a rare document. It is, because this, this was, uh, actually it looked like it since Friday, July 27th is when he actually had the celebration. Um, anyway, here we go. It's called Boar Art. I don't want less of anything else. I just want more art for myself. Just for myself? Hell, for society, for culture, for the betterment of all humankind, for the pimp on the boot black. June at the cinema, Bobby at the newsstand, even for the governor throwing the switch, turning on the juice, going to church services at the end of the week. I want more art for the armed services, replace the pence with triptychs, bring the Marines back to Malibu, and send Cristo to Lebanon. I don't want less of anything else. I just want more art for ourselves. I want art in public places. I want art in the people's faces, in the mosque, in the soup kitchens, on cop cars, in the doghouse, caked with on the, in the doghouse caked with griddle grease and six years of smoke. I want art in the lavatories of Bowens. Take art to the moon. 
make it up on the space station. Send someone up who can really take photographs. So I'm sitting in this hot tub with this banker. He tells me what banking is, and then asks me what art is. And I say, I want another beer. You sweat, but it refreshes. It relaxes, but it keeps you on the edge. It's real. It's intoxicating. So I'm sitting with this dealer with thick, thick slabs of sun melting off the veranda, and she tells me how to make a quick 50 grand. And I say, I'd rather make a slow five bucks pushing these poems. People snorting art in through their ears and eyes. I like the smell of art, the look and taste and feel of art. And then, there's a few short, there's a, uh, an open page of short, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just some of them. Again, Bill Shively, one time host here. You are biting my nipples all day. Neither the temple bell nor the neighbor's samurai child wakes me from this. I taste you in my morning coffee and for a moment in my sake, right before I swallow. I try to find a stool where I can lean against a wall because your hand has fallen into my lap. And my eyes are almost closed. My eyes are almost closed. This is, these are like haiku-like poems here. Cool damp promises hot damp. Girl, soon, woman. The day falls asleep on my shoulder. Clouds, the sun leaving Rice fields, <coughs> soulless, a woman without hips. By being everywhere, shadows are gone, and the children stop teasing each other home. Okay, this is the last. This is one, the last one I'll do here. Us old frogs, rice field egrets, sake sweet as cold apples, rivers and rivers, and in the sun. Before you know it, night has paid, and despite the hour, there are still children laughing. The sound itself makes some people happy, but us old frogs try and hide. Us old frogs just gotta hide. So Bill Shibley, one time, we were passing away recently, I think probably in July or August. They, I, I'd have to look back at the letter, but I thought I would read those just for the, the sake of historical historicity. <clears throat> now I'm going to sit down. I will find out who was first on this list. Well, Sally Love Saunders is first on this list, followed by Adolf and John and Owen and Zane. Then me, I come back, and the keynote is always read on the uh, open mic, and then Celine, and then David. So we may have a, we have, we have an intimate and great evening this evening, quite unlike other times. And this is bringing back memories to me in the 70s when I first came to San Francisco and I used to come to Baker Ground. It was just like this. It was just about this, uh, this intimate, not, you know, not too many people, and I'm thinking of the people that used to come, Rex Stewart, Rex Stewart. Yep. Solitude. 
and with a quivering candle light up the darkness. When one of my first books came out, computers were just coming being born, and a computer person made a computer pattern out of one of my poems, which went, when a disappointment comes, it wears pleats. I'm doing a stamp, and it had the computer going like this. Oh boy, people thought that was great. Like, this is back in, oh, years and years and years ago. I don't write poetry. Poems come to me and say, excuse me, then write. The words settle down on paper on their own, like obedient children in uniforms. Growing up, we had a house with a damp, cold cellar. It was always damp and cold. Long stairs led to him, the stairs hard to navigate, even as a child with small feet. Now I have a leg injury. Again, I'm, I'm like I did when 15, feeling like I'm in the cellar. It's damp and cold. Invisible swords slashing at me, such energy and speed. I try to somehow turn on oncoming swords to sweep vibration. It doesn't work. Nothing could be better than a peanut butter sandwich with jam. It doesn't take much to happify me. What simple pleasures do you enjoy? My sister sent me a CD tape of great beauty. The music floods my apartment, turning it into a flower garden of beautiful scented flowers. Come swim with me in the quiet turquoise waters of sound. My sister sent me a CD tape of great beauty. Alas, my life is stuck in traffic. Leg, leg injury, constipated movement. I try to design a life with super highways of activities so I can accomplish from point A to B. But sometimes illness or accident makes me feel stuck in traffic. The other day I sat across from who used to be a close friend, but he's now simply an empty shell, a hollow structure. I talk to him and my words only echo. Yet I can feel spirit and love from friends and family who have died. It is so they are whispering in my ear. My friend is left in spirit, but present in form only. Take baking school leaders. You know what I mean. There you are in the kitchen baking like brain surgery. In walks a brother, licks his spoon and is off. I don't bake anymore, nor do I have a brother, but still there are cake spoon liquors in my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> a friend now speaks a foreign language. I'm so busy, she warbles, as though saying some language putting up a barrier. I can't get connected. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm so busy, I'm busy, 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 busy. busy. I feel like I could play the keys of my life up and down the piano keyboard. Sometimes a crying toddler, sometimes a teenager, interested in lipstick. Sometimes my fingers move slowly. At a concert. As a child, I would go to a hiding place in the woods where I had a shelter, smooth earth, and branches fortressing me. So today I'm at a concert, music surrounding me, flames of candles. There's a man playing a cello. His shoes are old and worn, and his fingers long and graceful. Music flows from the tips of his fingers, instruments talking and whispering, as on a back porch swinging while candles sing. Thank you. Kids in um, mental hospitals and 
migrants, and all kinds of interesting people. Is this, is this the same thing here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's copies of that. There's copies of various things here for people to uh, take Can a I look add at. Can I add some to the pile? So we will give the announcement. Yes, yes, please. Here, here, John. Okay. Here, you want more? Right. No one, that's fine. Okay. Let us see here. <clears throat> Mr. Adolf Pickett is next. If you kind of give him a round of applause. <laughs> Something new I have found. I think I better get back here again. Ooh. I don't know. Something new I have found. It grew, keeping you like it, running like a hound. Got to go to work for whoever rang the bell. I have found something new. Come on my shoe, triple digit dead. I won't take anything given to me. I must work for it. Except if I'm out of bounds and the universe all just blinded, landing in blackness, then I'll be crowned for the new thing I found. Rest in peace, good being alive. Rest in peace, well away where you rest, but in peace. You are restless, then there may be a problem. But when it's all over, the rest will be appreciated. Good being alive is what I need to hear from everyone to everyone else. And I will hear. Good being alive, good being alive. Good being alive, good being alive. Good being alive. Myself and others will believe that and value life and peace. Saturday morning reading. If, I, if you want to talk to me, you got to go through the machine, the computer, the neon signs. That's where a strain of hair-like particle can power the world. And if you want to be in it, you must become like it. Even though you was it before it came, now you climb down and lift it up. The show. So now who do you serve or choose to know? It's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you. Not anymore. Mother's Day, Mother's Day. On this Mother's Day, what we gonna say? You fit the pattern, the form, beauty reigns for you, fit the truth. I'm glad you came through for me and for you. The glamour rolls on for the cast of beauty follow you with sense too. What can I say but thank you very much? Pride. The few and the proud above the clouds, they swoop down and make it happen, doing their job like no other. You look around and see just how, hey, the few and the proud, the few and the proud. Know not the wind blow, waves I don't know. They leave you busted and broken just before the show. You look around and see just how, hey, the few and the proud, the few and the proud. Begging over there, looking like you don't care. Big and bad, as they bear, the few and the proud, the few and the proud. <laughs> Reasons. Golden and bloom, pile of gumbo food. I got reasons. Black reason, blue reason. Everybody jump reasons. I got reasons. That picture we took when you was only six reasons. Come over and stop reasons. Molly Brown reason. You bigger than reason. I got reasons. No food in the pot reason. Looking everywhere reasons. I thought you didn't care reasons. Once is not enough reasons. Golden dress in the window, reasons. Sleepy head, reasons. I got reasons. Family reunion, everyone out there. A blue seal, I thought Baca, reasons. I got reasons. Then I went away that very same day. No reason. Thank you. 
Great job, Nick. Thank you. All right, this brings us to John, then Owen, then Zane, then Stephanie, then Dan, then Kanara, then our teacher should, as we know, oh, even more. All right, hold on a second. This is beeping. Beep, right. beep. Yeah. Roadrunner. Yeah. The Roadrunner will now read. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to do a short plug and then a short <coughs> poem. Um, I do a lot of video in, in the Bay Area for poetry, and I'm, I'm doing my fundraiser this beginning of the year. And I have like uh, cards that if, if you if you like to find out about it, I, I I have like 600 poetry videos online, some of them like an hour and a half long, and. Uh, it also has a web address on the card too, so you can, if you're just interested, I can help you with that. Anyway, I wanted something from Indiegogo, and then I'm probably moving shortly, so I'm trying to get move-in costs. And, um, and then I'm trying to beat out Chris Trian. I'm, I'm, I've decided I know how to paint, so somebody might disagree, but <laughs> uh, this is supposed to be Henry Miller and uh, it's for sale if anybody's interested. And I'm usually pretty reasonable. I'm, uh, if anybody knows my regular prices of stuff I do, uh, most of the time it's for free, but when I do charge, it's, it's usually pretty cheap. And this is uh, going to be a bunch of haikus, or zen haikus, or let's see if I can find it, there it is. And uh, they're short, and um, they aren't strict haikus because I, I used, I, I counted the words instead of the syllables. It's supposed to be measured by syllables, but I used words. So you'll have, you'll have to give me a poetic license. So uh, they're, group, they're groups, so I'll read them as they are groups. Zen Haiku 1. Zen, staring at tree rings. Who would fight over circles and fingers? Zen fights barriers on eggshells. Zen Haiku 2. All have sinned in Zen. All but the lilies of the fields. Only one lily amongst the daisies. Zen Haiku 3. Suzuki, daisies, taboo. Child Bogart. Damaged innocence within a ceramic dye mold. Die sets, die lie, tie die. Zen haiku four. Hippie lie, lying in grasses. Eccentric social contradiction. Running die, run on sentence. Racing conscience. Folly outside of margins. Zen haiku five. Four while, four walls up on roof. Suzuki watching poodle chase tail. Aesthetic laughter. Daisy motive for transcendental flower child. And then I have, I'll, I'll just read four more. Eagle Cohen. Eagle flew over old home. Eagle grabs painful memories, grabbing the mouse. Memory clubs me over the head. Father Cohen, I remember December, lead in. Father Hungry Ghost invited me hungrily in. He dined on my soul. Rumor Cohen, hearts are kept in basement. Humor gave no clue to idle rumors. Who is he, I begged. And then the last one, um, Google ruined the title, but it is only Cohen here. So everybody's surprised, curious about the visitor. Behold, Sherlock's twin walks in, presumptuously unannounced. Who is the criminal? Coming next, and Celine, our feature has arrived. We will recognize you in just a moment. 
but give them all a round of applause. We have it there, and that's it, John. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, yes. What? Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. What's called At the Beach. The fey roar of the tides on the gray sand rolls under the pebbles, the pebbles, and the gray soft, soft beach. Families with children, children running towards the water and back towards the sand and seawall. I decided it was time to go home. I got up and walked around now, around some around some fence they constructed. Two. The sea broke sharply, then the warmth, then the waves turned to quiet mush. The fog settled, settled like a blanket over the ocean. I could see two surfers, just their heads in the ocean, going out, gaze out, gaze out into the Pacific. It's another one. Um, James Liddy, a memoir. Uh, James Liddy was a creative writing instructor I took two classes from at San Francisco State way back in 68. He was a native of Ireland, County Roskman, a poet and a barrister. He held classes in a small cottage on Bali Street in the Hay. He liked my work and we became friends. He was honest in his criticisms on my poetry. Oh no, Wally, they're on an ego trip, he would say of, of some rivals. Stan Rice, the late Stan Rice was one of his rivals. Oh, the pay a goblet stem of a boy. A pay a goblet stem of a boy indeed. Definite rubbish, Wally. He was honest with me concerning my poetry. That was bad, Wally, he said of one of my poems that I tried to be mystical in an Elliot-esque way, but ended up being vague and semi-nonsensical. The machinery of, of light, the birds soaring in flight, the dark angel's sight, the day's everlasting, the day's everlasting night, the vast indecision that shakes its head at derision, the holy circumcision of the human condition. Hour, the hour winds and goes by slowly. Human interaction can make me feel lowly. The day has passed, spinning like a top. The earth slowly rotates like music. Never will it stop. At the Trieste, the final hour after six, people dart in and out, frantic running about. There is no more to a once and future metaphor. <laughs> there is music, mark the time, waiting, waiting on eternity, the eternal sky, the blink of the goes high above us. At Starbucks, the cold, stiff sky. Stars down, stares down at me. Girls pass by. It is a cold day in January. Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue sees me through. Oh, Richard. Night falls on the quiet trees. The pensive, passive sky remains the same. The night roars. It's neon, it's neon love. Eerie sounds from above. My mind is on a trip. Uh, metaphors give society the slip. Allegro. The soft neon along um, anon is full of music. I can bear hardly hear Starbucks. It is barely audible. Music is my soul and it is good to me. Congreal. The world belongs. Hmm. 
across the Nuto. Through the sharp, seepage night air, the more I wait about, the more I wander about, looking for you here. Conmolto. CC Rider, the traveling apparatus song fest single. Lord's Gate ladies, flowers, flowers wet with cold rain, clouds and clouds talk to a time machine. Bizarre and Berkeley, hip to an aperture, cloud of candid Christians, all poems are bad, toss or tiddly wings. Alright, this is just a paint. Wipe out. Falling asleep again on the bus. Oedipus, the coachman of that steamy stop over the L car, searches to bus. Down to the sea, down to the crew to the sea. Surfers doing the surfers stomp to make me believe they are gremlins. Quasimodo locked the tubes, walking the nose. One of them actually rides away, wet suited, a three a three, four, three yards to shore, in a dangerous green sea with the color of Veggie Boy. The waves very cold and mushy. Reminds me of when I was 18. Death of a Grammy was two minutes long. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> so we had people come in, so I wanted to just let everybody know where we're at right now. So um, next we have, uh, this is going to be the order of people who are coming up next. We have Zane and Stephanie. And uh, David, then me, then Tanara, then Garrett, then our feature, Celine, and um, Greg might be coming before Celine anyway. It's just, you know, we might, we might just be happening that way, so she'll be the tipper topper. So, Mr. Zane, come on up here. Give us your best or your worst. We will be putting it all. Oh, uh, just one time. Yeah, give him a this is, the, this is the emails. If you want me to send you the emails, and I do send out one or two a month, then you can put your name on there. At the break somewhere, just so you know that it's there, and that's why it's there. Anyway, go. Have a good, have at them. Hey, Don't let them have any mercy. <laughs> so I found the book on the side of the road, and I opened it through like a random page, and I found like the first thing that my eyes went to was this quote that made me really happy. Uh, Kids have no sense of fear, Wolf Segla said gravely. Perhaps it's just as well. Yes, I told you, sunflowers. No, you replied, dandelion seeds, blowing in the wind, catching the sweater sleeve of unsuspecting victim of wish. Yes, I told you, car alarm. Yes, I said silence. Then the world burned like wet newspaper. The sticks stacked upon each other like bodies in a hole. We caught each other's breath and held it between our palms, touching starlight. Billions of years past, we are uncertainly certain that there is more good to come, more to see, more to do, but only if more is done than what is simply required to get through the day. Sleep sweetly, you unsung bird symphony. Twiddle your fingers together, make fire, give some teenagers something to talk around. Pass the time pushing up daisies, tie them around your neck, hang from a tree broken and hit the ground, lay in a daze, contemplating jazz like old monks disguised as riders. Let the world unfold only as it was meant to be. Live your life 300 times over. Sing to the sea with no melody other than street lights and rusty brake pads. Give the world hydrogen peroxide, empty open cuts, touch the honesty of a new place called home. I don't know, I usually only read one, but I don't know. I don't know, that's a new one. Yeah, so Sitting cross-legged on the top of the world, I wonder what it all means. Maybe 
for me to spill my guts into the alleyways and into the ears of sluts to find the crux of all this humanity rip out the pages of vanity for a crutch and smoke that shit let the clouds billow and use the history of the world as my pillow realize that we are all so young life is a cosmic blink and we don't have the time to sit and think unless we want to unless we're forced to but we'll have to make do with our decisions good and bad and through the soot and the ash we'll paint pictures we'll find how to tinker with the known world find a grown girl tell her what we have is what we've got and we've got a lot and that's enough even though sometimes it feels that it's not true you gotta do all that you can do keep the hue of your world view from turning into blue oceans covering your eyelids drowning in so-called intelligence praying to so-called omnipotence it don't make no sense just quite yet but it will is what I scribble on the wall so that I can remind myself that the knowledge is coming when I don't search for it, that the morals are for books and crooked leaders, seventh grade English teachers learning to skim through my own pages, pick up a couple phrases, let the syllables ring through my cracked Liberty Bell cranium, beautiful things can still come from the broken and scotch tape exists and when the soul persists to float out open through slits I tape it up and keep moving, keep growing, even in sleep, even in the shallow speech on ocean beach, under stars, I will keep my heart, my body, and my mind, and I will remind myself it's enough. It's enough. Thank you. Stephanie, then myself, then Kennard, then Garrett, Greg, David, and then Celine. Just so you know, I think, I think we're going to do it that way to make things up. Did you give her a round of applause? <laughs> Everybody's here. You know, I went, I went by the uh, Symphony Hall. I walked from the Civic Center up the hill and I when I was thinking when I was at the lighted symphony of the symphony hall, but it's really my church. I love all the music that I've heard. I go to a lot of concerts, and I just, I just think it's my church. I see it, and I think, this is the temple. I'm at the temple. So when uh, Zane and, and Owen were reading, and they had all these musical references in there, I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, I love that. I wish poets would put that in their poetry book. But this is not on any of that stuff. And this, the first one is a narrative about uh, something that really happened, and then I'll then I'll have to read a little poem um, that's more poetic. But anyway, this one's called Janella's Oak Tree, a true story. Many months ago, a Shoshone woman settled in her adobe house by Cash Creek for the for the night when kaboom! A huge explosion draws her outside, where the ancient oak tree now lies on its side. And oak water gushes out of the stump splinters. An earth explosion. She scoops a handful of the water and tastes clean and wonderfully pure like old mountain water of pre-contact days. Such a mystery. Why this? Why now? One week later, the whole Napa Valley shakes a big quake, destroying buildings, much of the town. And in the days that follow, creeks and streams depleted by a long drought suddenly become full and flow, flow with force for several days. She feels the spirit of Mother Nature, of the earth of the Great Spirit, speaking to us, shaking our dull wits in a giant cosmic complaint against excessive human incursion, against the organized assault on the home planet. The destruction of the atmosphere and waterways and the extreme high pressure of water used in cracking deep rock to release oil and natural gas. We have gone too far, too far. Like the fisherman's wife when her wishes expand, uh, when her wishes expanded and she longed to be empress of the universe, all her gains lost with that one unattainable self-destructive lust for ultimate power. We are at that point. Janela, the Shoshone woman, knows it, even as water gushes out of the roots of her oak tree, now destroyed. Time we all silenced our cell phones and listened to these signs, the pressure, movement of the Earth's crust, the land, 
The Indians belong in front on this parade, a parade of silent awareness. Attend the flow of the streams and the odd silence of birds. Excessively red sunrises and sunset, and a difficulty breathing. Make money listen, lure them outside. But will they extinguish their glow screens? The future depends on that. There are six haikus. One, gray sky to gray sea, flow pathetic streams barely now, water seeks water. Two, native messenger paddles across the calm bay at peace with shorebirds. Three, flashes of yellow, feathers dart about the leaves, willow branches bend. Four, Rays pierce the thin clouds like a hope among pine needles in forests of doubt. Five, will days end slowly, bring thoughts to weary creatures nestling by the moon. Six, and in the blackness, contemplating starry night, thoughts drive down to sleep. Seven, sleep the night away, but let the sunrise wake you, eyes and heart wide open. Thank you. So we have David, David coming up next, David Robertson, give him a nice round please. So you who first, pretend I am not there, wrestling you to the ground. I am immovable as long as I grasp your roots that I loyally drape around myself. I only want justice. For this, I will tear out my eyes to make you blind. You move first. My retaliation binds us as brothers. I clench your indignation like a lichen gripping a rock. Do not see things my way, for I would suffer endless sorrow. Who would I be without us? We defeat every broker who sees us as separate. Why can't they show us that I am right? I will have victory as soon as squares are circles. Do not conceive this. Be mine forever. Thank you. know where we are. Same bath time, same bath station. You come back. All right. Um, is Greg on? Oh, he's still back there. You want to, I, I can go and then you can go. I put both in the Gary both in the room. Yeah, he just did. So yeah. I, I could go and then you can go since you're still the Gary. But he's, he's after me. Oh. We, we go you, me, him, but I can go be then you, then him. Yeah. Right, why don't you go take care of anything? You have a few minutes. You know me, I'll go on for seven hours. Everybody fall asleep, want to go home. Like that. <laughs> I tell you. Well, let's see here. Give me a number. Give me five. Ooh. Okay, let me get let me do this one. And that. So, um, all right. 
so this is called Young Hands. When our hands were young, when back in the days of sunlit sand pouring through fingers, glistening water arcing through the play cloud sky above the sand castles built on Jamaica Bay, where the beaches and the oceans were just right, the sun not too hot, and we had all the time in the world. Young hands gathered autumn leaves, pitched them into a pyre, made toys of items common enough to be found when imagination transformed cardboard into machineries of joy, hands with slippery mud oozing between fingers, fingers shaping it into circles, pies. When our hands were young, when they were soft, round, and we knew them for what they gave us, the soft, furry, warm touch of a living creature held, smooth, cool things like silk and oil, for moving pieces on a board, rolling dice, shaking on it, crossing hearts, or holding cards close on a long Brooklyn summer's night. When our hands were young, when they held each other's in innocence, long, long ago in a place far, far away in a life in a world that is no more. Our young hands played with their shadows, slapped five, clapped in time to the street beat. Our young hands shooting for odds and evens, pitching pennies, young hands, long, long ago. Our young hands were promises, holding hope and love above all. Nothing, nothing as they are today, long since losing what they held for us, which we felt slipped from our fingers, and so gained these appendages which can clench or beat or remain held close while a coffee table's distance away counterparts remain idle, while there lingers a distance of years, old hands which have forgotten to touch in a way our young ones never ever could have, and so these don't reach out to soothe another's. When our hands were young, when they, childish, simple, longed for finger paint, would fidget for something else to do and reach out for another's brother to brother in a world, in a time when, when our young hands had not pulled hard triggers, signed on to regret, closed into a clutch of our animal minds, pointed posthumously at pride and its temporal relics, whether buried and lost to decay, or hidden away with the dim faded medals of honor long left out of hand, yet which still draw us into our own long aching with time. I say, these aren't mine, how could they be? These things were free when our hands were young, when they were fine, a source of wonder as all young hands are, making many a magic marvel. I remember when our hands were young way back when, and I knew I'd never forget how when our hands were young, when love was so simple that any touch could make it. And now on a completely different tack, tongue, touch, stop that. Okay. So if you know, um, if you know Rumi, like I know Rumi, so this is written That's in our own Rumi. Yeah, so this is a rogue Rumi, thank you. It's untitled. Drunk on the divine again and again. What flavor is it this time? Meringue, key lime, or a tangy cocoa drip? What say? In this rich life, we are all we can deliver of it. And more. Trust me, it's all up to us. Without us, it's going nowhere fast, as my mom used to say. And then some, as Dad would add. So please, join in and indulge me. Raise that precious cup. Turn and dip in. Take a full measure. 
even more. Let your vessel be over full, over top it, and then pour in more. Swirl this divine wine. Yes, you may swirl, slurp, and even swap it about. For there's one thing about this vintage, there's always more where that came from. And a good time for each drop too, as Tom would say. Believe you me, as Mary might add, and as we all used to say, believe me you, before laughing. So, remember, Grasshopper, the chorus of one must needs be the chorus of many. So does this divine wine serve itself, its vintner, and all the swelling hearts of those such as we, who, lolling in its swells, are as joyous as we are profoundly lost in our hearts. Thank you so much for that. I, I, I like to read that every once in a while. So, uh, who do I say is next? Because I change this list up. Okay, we have Greg Kinara, Garrett, then Celine. And that's my plan at the moment. Celine, give a hand to us so people know who you are. This is our feature for the evening. We haven't had a chance to recognize you when you came in, so we're doing that now. You just gotta hold everything when she gets up there. You gotta get, she's gonna just like, 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 a, like, like a cleansing wind. Jump, take, take your soul and, and go, like you do with a rug, you know. Anyway, sorry. It's not that bad. Really. Greg, are you up here? <laughs> Can I say you? Okay, great. And then Kinara, I think I'm missing, I think I'm missing things up here, but people are patient with me because I'm so old. Thank you. Give him a round. Mr. Hey, this one is entitled First Girl, and it's for my friend Joey. The family's first girl came out east, went out west before the rest, tested the waters, then returned, left a trail of thin string songs sung cross country long from Empire State to Golden Bay, musical breadcrumbs to an alternate way. The family's first girl came out east, went out west, before the rest, from Brooklyn chorus to Castro verse, left a trail of work and folk songs, Jewish prayers and black hymns, strung like pearls along melodic strings, blues, show tunes, late afternoon crooning about life and injustice in the world, all calmly delivered and comfortably curled like a cat in the lap of luxury, lovingly lost in the soothing voice of the family's first girl. Um, a short little haiku before the next poem, and uh, my ficus tree droops, a cry for help from being moved from room to room. Ficus. Me, my ficus, and I don't take transitions in stride. When made to move, we often get adamant sometimes refuse, maybe shed some leaves, perhaps a tear or two, but later learn to adapt and make the best of wherever we're able to rest our limbs or other things we feel the need to stretch. Me, my fighters and I sleep deep into day while we miracle grow at night, get nourishment from the sun, but shun direct or very bright. We reach for the shade with all of our might, but when temperature's too high or humidity's too low, we dig our roots in firmly in the valiant attempt to grow. 
Me, my fighters, and I don't have much choice which way our branches go. We all have to bow or bend to the command of a greater force. Sometimes we're too sensitive, too easily bruised or hurt, too willing to embrace a neglect that rejects us so we're left feeling jinxed, damned, and cursed. Feeling less than our best with no defense from being broken or bent. Like watching rainy day drops dot the other side of the pain while we're slowly dying of thirst. But me, my fighters, and I will find ways to survive no matter the challenge, somehow we'll manage to keep most of our leaves and thrive. Though we might lose a few from time to time. It's all right. It's all right. It's just another game of life for me, my fighters, and I. Okay. And the last poem I'd like to share with you uh, is a poem, poem I found uh, online. I discovered this poet just by chance. And he's a uh, young African American poet uh, with cere cerebral palsy. And he writes through his laptop. And he's just brilliant. I think he's brilliant. His name is Latif H. McLeod. And this is one of his poems. And this is entitled, I Am Too Pretty for Some Ugly Laws. I am not supposed to be here in this body, here speaking to you. My mere presence of erratic moving limbs and drooling smile used to be scrubbed off the public pavement. Ugly laws used to be on many U.S. cities' law books, beginning in San Francisco in 1867, stating that any person who is diseased, maimed, mutilated, or in any way deformed so as to be an unsightly and disgusting object or an improper person to be allowed in or on the streets, highways, thoroughfares, or public places. Any person who looked like me was deemed disgusting and was locked away from the eyes of the upstanding citizens. I am too pretty for some ugly laws too smooth to be shut in, too smart and eclectic for any box you may put me in. My swagger is too bold to be swept up in these public streets. You can stare at me all you want. No cop will bust in my head and carry me away to an institution. No doctor will diagnose me, a helpless invalid with an incurable disease. No angry mob with clubs and torches trying to run me out of town. Whatever you do, my roots are rigid. Like a hundred-year-old tree, I will stay right here and glare at your ugly face, too. Mm. Thank you. Oh. Attributing when someone reads a poem by somebody else, I like attributing it. All right, can I? Oh, you want to send me a call? Yeah. 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 I, I just want to say the piece that he just wrote uh, is, is powerful. No, read, not wrote. I'm sorry, my apologies. Read. Uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's very powerful and, and uh, deep because. Uh, 